Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today we are going to trim my Rose of Sharon that are in the back of the house. Um, we're getting it done early so that I could do it while it's in the sun, because today for some reason it decided to be one of the coldest days of winter, so we're like, uh, feels like 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, I have to get it done early because my bonsai back deck area has become Franny's ballet studio and she's been doing uh, classes live on Instagram, uh, both taking and teaching them. So I thought that was pretty cool for my 13 year old to take the lead and get her, uh, her company members going. So anyways, she is 13, so daddy is not allowed to watch anything. But anyways, let's get to these rows of Sharon. Uh, nice uh, six foot tall trees after I'm done pruning them. Maybe, maybe seven, seven and a half foot actually because the hummingbirds absolutely love them in the spring and summer. And there's nothing better than watching hummingbirds uh, buzz up to your windows all day long. So that's what we're going to get to right there. That's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. Alright y'all, so I'm going to work left to right. I will uh, talk during this first video. Uh, what I'm really going to do is just prune back to where there are no more of these old flower buds. And I'll probably get the same amount of growth that I did last year. So it'll go from base of the windows to start and then growing up to anywhere between six inches and a foot and a half above there. So if you don't have Rose of Sharon in your area, or if you're in like a more a warmer area, this it's like uh, it looks like a hibiscus. And if you want to, these actually root really well. Uh, I gave a bunch of cuttings to a client who has a nice farm, and she got them to root just by sticking them in the ground, made a little hedge area. So I thought that was pretty cool. I had never had them before I moved here to the ranch. So this branch is just coming straight out at me, so I'm taking that out. There's really no benefit to the lower flowers actually with these. So I'll raise the canopies a little more because I'm looking out the windows at them. I'm not gonna be in the field looking back at them. I don't have any use for any more. So I'll probably just toss these in the compost area. new growth that grew across uh, the interior last year. So I have a buddy who he does his uh, like in November, he does his pruning then. And so I guess it's fine to do it then because they're going dormant. Um, but I just prefer to do mine in the spring. Probably be good to do with like a little uh, hedge scissor, you know, those really large scissors, just to get a profile cut. Because you don't have to be very precise with these, they're, they have buds everywhere. I imagine it would be a pretty good treat to uh, Yamadori and prune back really hard because it has such muscular growth every year. Maybe that would be a project for another time. I have my 500 white spruce trees coming for the tree farm at the end of this month, beginning of April. Uh, hopefully, it's already been ordered and paid for, but you know, uh, things may be delayed 
it slightly. That's okay. We are on course with the tree farm. I got the rest of the cardboard laid and the chips laid and I got my sandbags in. So I have 500 sandbags. All I have to do is get a delivery of sediment and a couple of huge vacuum sealed packs of spa gum heat moss. I'll incorporate those together, the topsoil and the spa gum. And then I'll start filling those sandbags. I will, uh, in another video, I'll explain how I'm going to lay the sandbags to utilize the hill, the sun, you know, the rain, and uh, do the initial setup while they're still small. If you can't picture it, I'm laying the sandbags down on their side all in a row, touching the, the, uh, the shorter side of the rectangle, all touching, going down the hill towards the pond. And then after the trees go in, I pop a hole right in the middle, put the tree plug right in the middle, then I'll cover the rest of the uh, sandbag with you know four to six inches of those wood chips. So it'll be below for a weed barrier and above for uh, moisture retention and uh, heat. All right, so this is gonna take me forever. I know I got some negative comments about my time lapses, but I don't wanna hear me talk anymore. So let's, uh, I'm gonna throw in a time lapse. So you get to watch me finish this one here on the left and then the other three, and then uh, we'll close it up. If you have any questions, just go ahead, leave them down below and uh So, a little close up of the pre prune. I have two down and two to go. Relatively young trees, but they produce a whole lot of flowers. Each one of those is a purple, a pink, or a white flower. I have all three. And then I have a couple around the side of the house. All right, back to pruning. All right, y'all, so that's it. All four taken care of for the season. So like I said, I prefer to do it in spring, but you could do it in late fall as well. This is the tallest and most dominant one. So I took that one down a little farther than the others, just so maybe we get them to even up this year. So that one on the end's the runt. So it must be because the sun rises right up over, say, that corner of the chicken coop. So this side just must get more sun for longer in the afternoon. So nice morning and afternoon sun on these guys and really rewarding uh, florals with tons of bees and if you're lucky hummingbirds uh, so you see I trimmed them back and took off any of the old uh, flower petals just to let those inner nodes that are there existing have all the full sunlight and room possible so all right we already got some baby daffodils coming in so spring is supposed to be here via the calendar it's a little chilly here in northwest Connecticut but that's all right Enjoying the day nonetheless. I hope you all are too. Stay positive out there and take care, y'all.